Welcome. This slideshow will provide a brief overview of the chain of infection, which will be applied specifically to bloodborne pathogen exposure later in this unit. This section is only intended to be a brief review as this is information nurses should already know. This information may also sound familiar from the mandated infection prevention training, which is required every four years. So what is the chain of infection? According to the Centers for Disease Control, the chain of infection is the traditional epidemiologic model that shows how the transmission of an infectious disease occurs. The chain of infection involves six components. The infectious agent, the reservoir, the port of exit, the means of transmission, the port of entry, and the vulnerable host. As indicated by the arrows, this chain occurs in a clockwise direction, which is how we'll be covering the separate elements. The infectious agent is any microbe that causes disease. This could be a bacteria, uh, like the bacterium that caused tuberculosis or the streptococcal infections, pertussis, Lyme. It could also be a um, pathogenic fungus, like the fungus that cause ringworm or thrush. And it could also be one of the many pathogenic viruses, like the viruses that cause measles, mumps, the flu, and all of uh, the bloodborne pathogens. The reservoir is essentially where the infectious agent normally lives. This could be human, like most of our common diseases, including our bloodborne pathogens, measles, mumps, flu, etc. And um, a human reservoir can be symptomatic or asymptomatic. We have uh, animal reservoirs, um, some infectious agents that have a res uh, animal reservoir include rabies, West Nile disease, and anthrax. And then there's also environmental reservoir. Um, Legionella lives in water, cause Legionnaire's disease. And also there are many fungal agents that live in soil. The port of exit is how the pathogen leaves the host. This could be through the respiratory tract, like when we uh, sneeze, when we have the flu, or through the urine, the feces. Um, some pathogens can cross the placenta. Uh, also, another port of exit is cuts or needles in the skin, like what occurs with the bloodborne pathogens. Means of transmission can either be direct or indirect. Uh, direct includes um, direct contact, like skin-to-skin -skin contact, kissing, and sexual intercourse. Um, direct contact also includes droplets spread through the air, uh, through sneezing, coughing, and even talking. Indirect uh, transmission includes airborne, which is when the pathogens are actually suspended in the air. Vehicle-borne, which is when an inanimate object indirectly transmits a pathogen. This can include dinnerware, bedding, needles, or surgical scalpels. In some cases, a vehicle may also provide an environment for the pathogen to grow, like uh, botulism in um, canned products. Uh, indirect transmission can also be vector-borne, which is where a living organism transmits the pathogen, uh, like a mosquito or fleas and ticks. Port of entry is how the pathogen enters the host. This can either happen um, through the respiratory tract, orally, the mucous membranes, or through the blood. Finally, we have our vulnerable host, which is the one who is uh, susceptible to the disease. For many infectious diseases, susceptibility can be due to a number of factors. 
Um, for many uh, diseases, we have um, either nonspecific immunity or specific immunity. Nonspecific immunity can be the genetic makeup of the person or um, if they have a disease that causes immunocompromise, they may be more likely to um, be vulnerable. And also there's some immunosuppressive therapies that could make a host more vulnerable. And then um, specific immunity uh, occurs with the past history of the disease, like uh, chicken pox, when you've had the disease and you've built up the antibodies against it. And um, also vaccines cause a specific immunity, much like how the hepatitis B vaccine can provide the immunity against hepatitis B. Having these immunities uh, will make a host less susceptible. This concludes this chapter of the unit. Later in this unit of instruction, this chain of infection will be translated to bloodborne pathogen exposure. Having this knowledge of the chain of infection, specifically the portals of exit and entry and Moser transmission, will assist in helping to understand what needs to take place in order for bloodborne pathogen exposure to occur.